be really great to have a little baby, a little Revel baby. Hey everyone, it's been a while, but I'm back. Um, this video is a little bit different than all my teaching videos. I just want to talk about fertility. Now my favorite thing to talk about, <clears throat> the awkward journey if you've ever had to deal with anything, but just to give you a little insight on mine. So, Hubs and I have been trying for about a year and a half, probably a little bit more than a year and a half. We've been married since May of 2018. Um, started off as one of those like, see what happens, whatever happens, happens kind of thing. So, Did the deed once a month, well more than once a month, did the deed. Um, I tracked my basal temperature at first because I didn't really know what I was doing and Google told me to do it. Um, so I did that. Was showing signs of ovulating, but never really like, nothing ever happened. Um, so probably, I wanna say, last, November, October, October, November is, I decided like, I'm gonna track stuff. Um, bought some little cheap regulation tests. If you can see those, camera's not very focused right now. It doesn't really like me. But um, there you go, that's better. But bought some of those from Amazon. It's like a pack of a hundred or something like that. And I actually started like tracking and seeing that I was ovulating probably like every cycle day 16, 15, 16. And everything was great. Like finally cycle was looking right. Dates were matching up. Just wasn't seeing the results that I wanted. Um, January. So our plans kind of went on a halt. Um, I had some blood pressure issues. I had to go to the hospital. I had to get put on medication for that. And that almost killed my cycle. I'm pretty regular. For someone who has been diagnosed with PCOS, I literally have a cycle every month. Been like that since I was 12. With an occasion, like every once in a while was late or whatever but pretty regular um that blood pressure medicine though killed it i literally had i tracked my stuff on an app once again it's hard to see because it doesn't want to focus it's it's having a day it's having a day it's fine but um literally Starting in January. From January to March, I had a cycle that was 56 days. Then March, I didn't get another cycle until May, another 64 days. Then didn't get a cycle until July, 57 days. And then finally it started regulating again. That one was a 38 day cycle, then it went down to 35, which I'm normally about 33 days. So this year has been trying to say the least. Um, still though, throughout that process, was regularly ovulating a month, every month, regularly, but nothing. So we did seek out support from our doctor in May. Had another glucose test done. Um, tested for hormone levels, which were all normal. Husband was tested for a semen analysis. His came back a little low, but nothing that was like 
concerning. Now, the only thing we're worried about we do have to say genetics is in November because he has a genetic disease. So, it's a waiting game at this point. As of right now, we're still doing the whatever happens happens thing, but I think he's a little bit more optimistic than I am. Um, we are just kind of waiting things out until November. Doctor said if all things look good, then he wants to start treatments, which kind of scare me, but gotta do what you gotta do, right? I just don't know. I just don't know what to expect and that's what bothers me. I'm a planner, so when I can't plan and things don't go according to my plan, it bothers me. So stay with me. I will update you guys periodically until hopefully something happens. Today is October 6th. I don't know when anyone will ever see this video or this vlog. I guess we'll kind of just see. Um, currently tracking cycle again. This is cycle day. I don't even know what cycle day it is. Cycle day 14. I did get a high rating on my ovulation test this morning. So I'm going to take another one this afternoon. Um, and then take some more and I'll let you guys know if I hit a positive or a peak. So we'll see. But other than that, I know you guys don't see this, but my friends are sending good vibes and I'm sending out prayers to everyone and anyone. It's just rough. 28 years old. Didn't think I'd have issues because I was never told I would have issues, you know. Wish my mom was still alive because I would ask her questions about her reproductive health and all that good stuff, but right now I'm just, it's a waiting game. I have an appointment Friday for my annual. He wants to talk a little bit more about next steps, so we'll see. Send some positive vibes. Got a high reading, so maybe we'll baby dance tonight or something, we don't know. But we'll see. So, send some vibes our way. Send some prayers if you are praying people. And we will see what happens. So, I'm going to take an ovulation test. It's cycle day 14, but it's in the afternoon. I did get a high rating this morning, so hoping that it's continuously high and maybe tomorrow or the day after tomorrow it's a peak, which means I ovulated. So, fingers crossed. We'll see. See you in a few minutes. I'm back, so it's been a few minutes. Checked it again. Come on, focus. Come on, focus. It doesn't focus, but it is another, it's another high reading. Show you my app I've been using. I don't know why my camera hates me right now, but if you could see, you would see that it's giving me a peak rating for this morning. It's not going to show. But it's giving me a peak reading for this morning and it's giving me another high reading but that usually lasts for a few days so peak should be like in another day or two so i'm excited let's see if anything happens doubt it but let's just see good morning it's monday morning i am getting ready for work 
Um, not really a crazy work day today. I'm going to set up some stuff at a fair display, for a fair display, so I don't have to actually teach today, which I'd rather be in the classroom. Honestly, it's a lot of work to miss work. But I did take another ovulation test this morning, and it came back high once again. So I haven't ovulated just yet, but fingers crossed that it'll happen within the next day or two. So just to show you, that was not flattering, just to show you what it looks like. If it'll focus, which it's not focusing because once again, this camera hates me. There we go. So the line is not yet darker than the test line but it's getting there so hopefully within the next day or two focus god this thing hates me focus hopefully within the next day we'll get a positive reading ovulation test so stay tuned good morning everyone i'm back live from the bathroom which is like where i live my life i feel like um just kind of updating you guys i am currently on i should be prepared but i'm not i'm currently on cycle day 17. i actually had a positive ovulation reading yesterday so i did ovulate some one dpo um no chance for a baby this month um didn't didn't baby dance, but I um I have a lot of data from my doctor because I do have an appointment this week. Just got to show him that, you know, I do ovulate. And it's weird because for someone with polycystic ovarian syndrome, I ovulate every month. I have a pretty regular cycle. So, I don't know. We will see. Um, really, 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 really dark positive reading yesterday so I'm glad that that happened I'm just gonna kind of keep tracking stuff and hopefully I'll have some answers or at least we have a pathway after my appointment so stay tuned hey guys I forgot to update you guys I do have a doctor's appointment today um it's my annual Hopefully I get to talk to the doctor about some other things. We'll just see. Too tired. It's too early. Hoping for some good news. For some good news. I'm hoarse. I just want to go back to sleep. Hey guys, good morning. It is Saturday the 12th. I had my appointment yesterday with my GYN, my OB, GYN, my guy, whatever you want to call it. Um, got some pretty good news. Thankfully, praise Jesus in heaven. Ugh, I look junky. Whatever. Praise Jesus in heaven. I had my annual and everything looked great. Doctor said everything was normal, um, nothing bad was going on, so that's good. Uh, we have a genetic appointment in about three weeks, give or take, three weeks to kind of test my chromosomes. Backstory, my husband has a genetic disease that is almost like always fatal, and the fact that he's 28 years old and still alive and working and doing life like any typical 28 year old would be doing is like phenomenal. So I think he has, I think what my husband said is a mosaic case where like his mutated gene is mutated. But we're gonna test me to see if I have that gene that he has, that chromosome, whatever, 
Because if I do, then we're going to kind of put our family planning on hold until we can do think of something different. And if not, my doctor said it is go time. So I'm excited. Finally got some good news. I'm staying positive. I've been tracking a lot of my cycle the last few weeks, few months, you know, just to get kind of accustomed to it. It's been a really rough year, if I'm being honest. January, I was diagnosed with hypertension, but like a different kind of hypertension, where my blood pressure will elevate really high, really fast. And then as high as it goes up, it'll crash down and then I'll get really, really, really sick. So I'm on medication to just make it even where I don't have those up and down dips. And that medication killed, killed my cycle. I mean, I went from having regular cycles all of 2018, and then in January, that medicine killed it, and it was almost every three months. So January to like end of March, beginning April, then not until June, and then finally in July, they became more regular. So my doctor did tell me, my family doctor told me it would take about six months for my medication to kind of even out and for my body to get used to it. And I didn't want to believe it, but I'm glad I listened to him. It was a really trying year, it was rough. Um, so once that medication kind of did what it was supposed to do, then I realized that, that medication gave me horrible gastro issues and now I have like the worst heartburn I've ever had in my life. And I've never, I never had heartburn. And so now I'm on a medication for heartburn. And it's one of those things where like for a while, you just don't think it's ever going to get better. Or you just don't think that it'll ever, it'll ever just be normal again. And so I went through a lot of depression at the beginning of the year because I just didn't know what, I didn't know what else to do, you know, I was kind of desperate. All my friends and my families are starting their own little families and you can't help but like, you're, I'm happy for them. I'm literally happy for all of my friends, all of my families, but you can't help but wish it was you. Like when you're in that state of mind, when you're ready, you know, you can't, you can only give the excuses, oh, it'll happen when it happens so many more times until like it really starts to hurt when people talk about it. So, um, you know, my students are like really, they're adorable, but they always ask me, you know, they're seventh graders, Ms. Rev, when are you gonna have babies? My cheerleaders are the same way. They're like, can you just have a baby so we can babysit? Which I don't mind, like I don't mind the questions, I really don't. Some days are a lot easier than others and this past year has just been a lot of like really hard weeks. You know, I've been focusing on getting healthier. So I'm about 25 pounds down, which doesn't seem like a lot to someone who's already large and in charge, but any little bit helps. And I'm just being patient, trying to be patient and just getting, enjoying this time with my husband, you know, we're still figuring things out being newlyweds. We just, we would like to add a kid into the mix before we feel like we're too old, if that makes sense. And I know I'm 28, which isn't old to some people, but I'm Cajun. It's where I'm, where I'm from. If you're not married and with child by 23, people tend to think something's wrong with you. So I was already really old when I got married at 27. And I'm about to be 29 in like three weeks. So. But I'm trying to do things on my timeline, which fits into my life. And I mean, I went to college, I got a master's degree. I would one day hope to go back and get more degrees. And I love my job, I love my career. My husband's got a great career as a, as a plant worker. And we're just really enjoying life. But we're at that mindset in life where we're ready for the next adventure. And if that means children, of the biological kind, then that's great. If it's not to that point, then we will figure things out as we go. I mean, we just ask for a lot of prayers and 
we're kind of keeping our mind open and trying to do what's right for us and kind of play things as they go. So great news of the doctor. He even said like, he's ready. Like whenever he's ready, let's go. So I don't know, we'll see. Genetic appointment in November. And then he really wants us to look into maybe doing an IUI, which I'm a little worried about like financially. I mean, I'm a teacher. We don't make that much money. Our insurance doesn't cover any of this. So it's just something that my husband and I are gonna really think about. And we don't know, we don't know. It's exciting though, but we're nervous. We're ready. Be really great to have a little baby, a little revel baby. But whatever happens, happens. Just continue to pray for us and open our hearts and our minds to whatever this TTC journey, wherever this TTC, TTC journey takes us. I would hope it would be the more traditional way, but everyone's story is different. So. Until my story is played out, I just won't know. So, fingers crossed. And I'll update you guys whenever I can get another updated. Bye.